Hey, welcome to this video, which is a time lapse of me working on this drawing. It is a study of Pedro Pascal and Nicolas Cage in a behind the scenes photo from a movie they were just in um, called The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. And I thought while we watch this time lapse together, I could do a cute little monologue with some thoughts. Um, I actually wanted to talk about using reference images and doing photo studies and what there is to learn when working from just one image or copying just an image. I've recently been working on a series of drawings that have basically just been studies based on movie stills and this one isn't quite a movie still, it's more of a promo image, but it feels like it could have been from the scene in the movie, so I'm just going to talk about it like it was a frame from the movie. And I've basically been working on this series as a way to push myself outside my comfort zone, and I think it's been a great way to gradually get myself to draw more of the human figure and also the environment around it because that's usually what's in movie scenes, right? So I consider myself to be like a portrait artist. A lot of drawings I do are just like the face, um, sometimes the hands, but usually just like shoulders up of a person. So this drawing not only has faces, but also has two entire bodies and a background. So that's definitely outside my comfort zone. And I think what allows me to make this like dramatic shift in my subject matter uh, is this thing that happens when I'm drawing from just one reference image. A lot of times when I make art, I'll either make my own reference images by taking pictures of myself or of objects, um, or if I'm limited to images I find online, I pull, I'll usually pull multiple reference images. So like I'll find pictures for like the face or the pose, lighting, backgrounds, colors, anything else, um, depending on what I'm drawing. And sometimes when I'm working like that, I'll just like composite the images or make a collage or like just look at the various pictures. Uh, but working on this drawing and the rest of the drawings in the series is just like a very different experience. Um, and just f like working from one image, like I said. The entire time I'm working on this drawing, I've got the reference image basically the same size as the drawing and either aligned and like below it or to the side. This makes it easier for my brain to translate what it sees in the reference images to my drawing. So if the reference image is at a different size, I'd have to like look at the reference and then scale it in my head and then try to replicate it. But having these two windows arranged like this in Photoshop like reduces the mental fatigue and this as well as working from one image allows me to focus on other elements of the drawing. Now I really like coming up with creative concepts and compositions in my drawings. I've always viewed like art as a way to tell stories but also as a, a way to just make images like from scratch. Uh, but recently, especially with the series I've been doing, I've really enjoyed focusing less on like the concept side of things and more on like colors and lighting and stylizing. One quote I've always resonated with is um, Ed Edgar Degas, who is a French impressionist artist, said, art is not what you see, but what you make others see. And I just like this idea of being able to like take an image or like here taking a slice of a movie that so many people have probably seen and it didn't stand out to them but then being able to pull it out and like breathe life into it and basically show them what I see in this picture. So not only do I enjoy these drawings but like their studies too. They're such an amazing learning opportunity and I feel pretty confident in my drawing skills and very confident in my art theory knowledge, but I feel like I always learn so much from working on these drawings. It's a chance to really appreciate and learn from all the other people who were involved in this image coming together. It's not just the photographer who took this picture, but it's 
the entire group of people who got to work together to make this movie, right? So I probably never would have appreciated like their outfits, for example, and like the colors and lighting just in general had I not tried to replicate it. I was really intrigued by all the neutral tones in the background. I noticed a lot of cool grays and blue grays in the stone stairs in the background, but there's also a lot of warm grays like intermixed with them. And I was really interested in trying to capture the texture and like the the variety in the stones as well. And not just completely like representationally, but also like impressionistic and slightly abstracted. And speaking of these fleshy neutral colors, I've noticed a lot of them in my art recently. And it uh, may or may not have been a couple months <laughs> since I finished this drawing and I'm just narrating this now but I'm realizing that this drawing marked a pretty pretty distinct shift in my art like I'm seeing this color palette in a lot of my drawings recently and I feel like it started here working on these photo studies feels like I'm just copying an image and it doesn't necessarily feel original because I'm not making anything new but I feel like I need to remind myself that these are a great way to learn and feel comfortable with my style. I'm not a photorealistic artist, so like these are truly an opportunity to create my interpretation of this image. And I might not realize it right away, but they truly do have an influence on my art and my process as well. When I try to make my own interpretation of an image, one of the things I focus on is rendering and shape language. I always start off my drawings by blocking in the colors and then slowly moving around the image, adding more details. I wouldn't necessarily call it rendering. I don't think that word has quite the right connotation for my process, but if I said I was blocking in shapes before, I'm now going in and making those shapes gradually more and more detailed. That's not too pretentious to say. But because I'm working from the one reference image itself, I get like the perfect source material to try to create shapes from. I don't have to try to invent in my head what these things should look like. I get to look at the reference image and try to use my knowledge of colors and shapes to try to make it look like better and more intentional. And I think that's a very enjoyable process. Another thing I've been focusing on is trying to achieve a balance between more blended areas and more detailed and textured areas. Whenever I make art digitally, I'm always going back and forth between two brushes. One is a pastel brush, which has an interesting texture, but because of its shape and the way I use it, it can look more blobby in the image. So I use a second brush, one that has like a hard edge and a soft edge, which makes it good for blending. And I think you can really see this in the stone in particular. It's got like a very interesting relationship between soft edges and hard edges. So for example, the background is not the focal point of the drawing. So I tried to focus a bit more on shapes and color variation rather than try to perfectly replicate the texture in the image. But I also didn't want it to feel too soft or blended because then the characters wouldn't feel grounded in the environment. <laughs> so those are the two things I felt like I was able to really focus on in this study. The rendering slash shape language and then the balance between details and blending. And I think I learned so much from this image. I love making these studies of movie stills. I've actually done I think about 13 of them so far. And I'm definitely going to keep making them in the future. I think it goes without saying that all artists should use reference images in their art. Um, but I'm going to make the argument that you should use just one. I think movie stills are a great exercise, but photo studies just in general work too. I think taking away the pressure of having to create an image and instead focusing on how you would interpret the image is very enjoyable and educational. So yeah, here's the final drawing. I think it looks good. I'm really proud of it. Um, and then here's a quick comparison of the drawing versus the reference image. Well, thank you for watching and that's it.